So the first thing you have to do for this lab is before you even come to class, which is the calculations of how much zinc and aluminum you will need in order to produce 200 milliliters of hydrogen. So when you do these calculations, you can assume that it's at zero degrees Celsius and one ATM, so you can use 22.4 liters as the volume. The first thing you should do when you get to class is set up the apparatus. This is most important and also the most complicated part of the lab. First, you'll do a practice run with either pure aluminum or pure zinc based on the calculations you did at home. So the theory behind this lab is that the amount of hydrogen gas produced by the reaction in this test tube will end up pushing water through the flask into the collection beaker. And the amount of water collected should equal the amount of hydrogen gas produced. Are we good? The first thing you should do is fill the sidearm flask almost all the way up to the sidearm with water. Then to fill this tubing up with water, you attach the pipette bulb onto this end. To use a pipette bulb, you press down and squeeze. To release, you press down and pull out. Also, a helpful tip is to put the pinch clamp onto the tubing before attaching the tubing to the siren flask. So the first part of this lab you will do is a test trial based off your calculations with either pure aluminum or pure zinc. So you weigh out the pure aluminum or pure zinc and then you place that in a small reaction vial. Then you measure out about 10 milliliters of 6 molar hydrochloric acid and pour it into the large test tube. Then taking your, really, your small reaction vial, slowly and carefully slide it in as to not to start the reaction. That means don't let any of the liquid into the reaction vial yet. Then you will close the, uh, put the stopper in the test tube and make sure to unclip your pinch clamp. Previously it was used to prevent liquid from going into the test, into the test tube, but now it, um, gas needs to flow out of the test tube. Then place your thumb over the stopper and, and shake vigorously and make sure not to turn it upside down because then liquid will get through the tubing. Okay, as the reaction proceeds, watch as the bubbles subside in this test tube and also as water fills up in this beaker. Also, a side note is that you have to make sure that the water is filled enough so it doesn't drop below the tube level. When the reaction has fully completed, make sure to take the rubber tubing out from the collection beaker and make sure that no excess water fills in from here to here because that will be excess volume. Okay. Now that you have all of the water collected in the collection beaker from the reaction, you will record the temperature and then you will record the volume of the water by pouring it into a graduated cylinder. You will also have to pour the water into plastic cups in order to mass them on the balance, and you'll have to do this multiple times because there is a limit to how much mass you can mass on the balance. Now if the volume that you just recorded is close to the calculated value that you got for your pure trial, you can move on and do your alloy trials now. You need to do two trials, but you only have a certain amount of the alloy, so be careful and choose wisely with how much mass you use of your alloy at a time. Once you have finished your trials for both alloys, you have to make sure to clean up your lab and put away all your materials. And once you have done that, take the volume from your collection beaker and use that in the equation PV equals NRT. For the pressure part of that, you have to make sure to account for atmospheric pressure, which you should record down, and then also keep track of the water vapor pressure, and you have to subtract that from the atmospheric pressure to get the full pressure to put in the PV equals NRT equation. Now that you have calculated the moles from PV equals NRT from your trials with the alloys, you will set up a system of equations with two equations in order to figure out the ratio of aluminum to zinc in the alloy. So your first equation will simply be x grams of aluminum plus y grams of zinc equals the total grams of the alloy that you had. And your second equation will be um, the moles of aluminum plus the moles of zinc equals the total moles, and you will use the molar masses of aluminum and zinc in order to figure out this, these moles. Mole Make sure to remember for your mole equation that it is not a one-to-one -one mole ratio reaction, so you have to take into account the stoichiometric ratio of the reaction when doing your mole equation for the system of equations. Now use the rules from algebra that you've learned in order to solve the system of equations, and you'll end up with x grams of aluminum and y grams of zinc. Then take the x grams of aluminum and put it over the total mass of the alloy in order to find the percent composition of, of aluminum in the alloy and do the same for zinc. And then the ratio that you get will determine your percent error from what is the real percent composition of aluminum and zinc in the alloy.